tell me, uh, tell us, what was your role in the savings yen in November 1960, when the paratroopers staged a coup against him? At that night, uh, there had been an attack on the Independence Palace, you know, the uh, White House, the Vietnamese White House. And uh, I thought it was a Viet Cong attack. So I went uh, to the Independence Palace. I have to claim a letter, a letter and to be in the palace. And uh, because I thought it was a Viet Cong attack, I sent order to the troops come to help us. And when I were in the palace, then at that time I saw it was a coup, um, you know, managed by the some of the uh, paratroopers, not all of them, but some of the, the battalion. And uh, so mm, I also feel that we have to change, you know, the ZM, um, make change the government. It become more effective in the um, struggle against the communists. Um, and I have a pressure on ZM uh, who agreed at that time to change his government. But, you know, later on, there are a counter coup and ZM come back in power, in full power. But in fact, Madame New and Mr. New, the ZM brother, uh, become more. Uh, powerful, if you can say so, beginning at that night until later on. Did Ziem make a promise to reform? Can you tell us about his promise to reform? Oh, yes. Uh, we, we had a tab, in, a tab in, that in which Ziem said that he dismissed his civilian government and gave the, another pow the power of the government to the general officer at that time in Saigon, and then for us to make a change that we need. And, uh, but again, you know, in the morning, uh, I cannot find any general officer around Saigon. I, um, I was the only one in present in Saigon at that time. So, uh, Madame Yu, you know, with the uh, political uh, action, you know, meeting or the demonstration and give the power back to CM. Did you feel very frustrated afterwards and feel that <clears throat> you would have to have another coup eventually or force Yem to reform again? Oh, yes, of course. You know, uh, uh, when we promise something, even if it's not a um, presidential campaign, you know, we just keep it to the population. Yes, I, I think uh, we lose every day Vietnamese life in fighting the communists, you know, and there are no progress. We have to do something else. You can, we cannot have the more the same, you know, every, every day. So we, we must change, yes. What did you think we should do? I think... Uh, Let's one more time. Go ahead. Thanks. I, I think he must uh, change the way uh, to run the country. For uh, example, not uh, to, end, to... in order to have the support of the majority of the population. He must use more the South Vietnamese native, you know, uh, than he used to have uh, people who work for him, for example, must be uh, Catholic refugee from North Vietnam, or they must be born in, in the central part of Vietnam, you know, and the kind of thing that uh, you cannot uh, uh, have the support of the population, and we need that very badly in the fight against the communist uh, subversion. Could you go back and <coughs> tell, you, tell us, how did you feel when all the Americans began to come to Vietnam, to South Vietnam, and in the 1956, 57, 58, uh, trying to export their ideas of democracy and help South Vietnam to become a nation. And how did you view this whole operation by the Americans? Uh, you know, the, that's a we we respect very much what the American want to do. Uh, but you know, sometimes 
the American way of life and the uh, American democracy maybe uh, cannot work in a country like mine, you know, in, in South Vietnam. Uh, so we, we can have the principle and adapt that in the country, but uh, we cannot adapt what you have here, you know, uh, two houses, all that stuff, you know, and changing the president every four years. You have many people here who can be leader of the country. We have a few in Vietnam, a few who can, uh, you know, uh, lead the country uh, because of education, because of the training, because all that uh, background that we must have, you know. Uh, so uh, there is a saying where in, in South Vietnam at the time is the French colonial, you know, did not export too much their idea of, d of uh, democracy outside of the French frontier. Now, with the American people, you export too much your democracy and your freedom, you know, all that, your way of life, and you want to impose that uh, in the country like Vietnam. It, does, it, it, it cannot work. But in summary, we better ad adapt and not adopt what you have. Did you have <coughs> any problems in dealing with the Americans of, at this period, not later, of uh, American advisors telling you what to do or uh, problems with the American embassy where they felt that you were you had to take orders from them? In the years of 50s, 50, 56? Yeah. No, we do not have that such problem at that time. There are uh, advisors in my level, is the corps, corps commander, and the division, and the lowest was in the regiment. And um, we get along very, very, very well. And rarely we need the, the advice at that time because sim it's very simple. We use the American weapons, you know, changing from the French uh, weapons and French uh, ammunition, and we have to use the American material. So we need the, the, the advice very badly. So it's no problem at that time. Let me go on and talk about the coup <coughs> that, that you staged. <coughs> January 1964. First question is why did you stage that coup? Uh, first question is we feel that the leaders in Saigon at that time, number one, does not keep their world. Could, could you start off by saying I staged the coup because? Yeah, I staged the coup because the leaders in Saigon at that time the, did not keep their world. Uh, you know, uh, by example, not killing them, or they killed them. Uh, secondly, by example, to try to do something better in the fight in fighting the communists. But you remember, I mean, uh, at that time everybody rem remember that they are a good time in Saigon. You know, uh, just enjoy the, the victory over them. And also, the main thing is the leader at the time, we feel, was for the French solution of Indochina. For De Gaulle at that time, you know, he wanted to neutralize South Vietnam and to impose a French solution for the whole Indochina. And leaders at that time were in Saigon, we feel it was true later on, like, for example, Zin Van Min, you know, who surrendered to the communists at 75. And we know that now we story. We know that Min was one of the men, of the Paris men in Saigon who took over. So uh, I think we, are all right. we were right at the time to change the leadership in Saigon. Now, could you tell <coughs> how you staged the coup, about how you flew down in the air? Uh, first of all, you sent your American advisor down from Saigon, and how the Americans gave you the green light to stage the <coughs> and then how you flew down in the Air Vietnam plane and what happened. Could you tell that story? Uh, yes. Look, look at me if you could. Yeah. Um, we, uh, I, I was in, in the I Corps, you know, in, in Da Nang, and uh, there are words from Saigon that they will have a coup d uh, at that night. Uh, and they want me to go to Saigon and to take over the coup because the organization 
of the coup against Zim, Zim in November uh, was a coup organized by me in, in, in August. So it's no change on the corps commander, the field commander at that time. So uh, they come to see me and that I invite me to go back to Saigon to take over. So I send my friend and advisor, at that time was uh, Jasper Wilson, uh, Colonel Jasper Wilson, and uh, he uh, went to Saigon uh, to check with the American authorities, mean the U.S. Embassy and the MACV, uh, headed by General Hawkins at the time, and uh, to see what, what they think about that. And he had to call me. Wait a second. We're just running out of time. <coughs> we have okay, to take, we have, uh, take two, and uh, camera roll 630 uh, coming up. Everything up to this point should be is for Elizabeth Dean and should be charged to her. These are uh, going to be just word clarifications in case you have to replace a word. Neutralize, 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 neutralize. Okay, now adapt. Yeah, adapt and adapt. Is it adapt? Adapt. 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 Ready? Mark it. Okay, so start off when you say you sent Jasper Wilson. Yeah. You sent your military advisor, Jasper. Yeah, I, I sent um, Jasper Will Colonel Jasper Winson, my advisor, uh, to Saigon to check with the American authorities, both in the U.S. Embassy and the military people. And the court was. Uh, um, both civilian and military um, uh, of the U.S. Embassy and the military support on the MACV at that time uh, support the plan to the Montagna people. The, uh, so we get the green light from the American authorities to do so. Uh, so after that, I flew to Saigon with a civilian air fly, uh, airplane with only one aide with me, you know, and we uh, stayed in Saigon that, that night before they start the coup. But it was a, it wasn't a, a real coup. We just, you know, keep some of the, the general what we want to arrest it, you know, and um, that's all. And there are no, no fire, no blood. You just said the leadership in Saigon. When you st after you staged the coup, what did you look forward to? Did you think then? Uh, Let's get General Kim in the alarm clock. Oh, let's get General Kim not waking up in the morning because he would say that. He, wa he wants to come out. Come on out. Uh, I do, uh, yeah, that's my young <laughs> boy. Can you tell the story about how General Kim didn't show up because he forgot to set his alarm clock? Uh, yes. Um, you know, coming in Saigon, I do not have any troops on hand at all, and I have to stay in a friend American compound with my aide. We were two, and we stay awake until 5 o'clock in the morning. So, the hour, the H hour that we start the coup. And I uh, took my jeep with my head. We go to the general um, staff um, building to see what happened. But, you know, no troop, no nothing. So I had to go to the airborne unit. It's my boys, you know, I was in paratrooper myself at that time. And I phoned to Kim. Uh, general Kim was chief staff at that time. And I, I called him, what happened? No, 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 nothing is moving, you know? So uh, uh, he, he told me in the telephone that, yeah, uh, I, um, I just forget to, to have the alarm, the clock alarm on. But don't worry, we have the situation on hand, so no, no problem. And in fact, yeah, it's no, no problem at all. What did you look forward to now? Now you had the power. What were you going to do with that power? Yeah. Uh, to realize, uh, to, yeah, I now I have the power. I want to realize the goals of the Vietnamese Revolution back in 1945. The goals were, and still be right now, is the um, independence, 
I mean the national sovereignty, the uh, um, freedom, and the happiness of the whole population. It was the national aim, uh, strategically. But when I had the po power, the country was divided in two parts uh, on the 17th parallel. We had an uh, insurgency in South Vietnam, and I want to, uh, how to say it, to integrate the Front of Liberation, the non-communist people in the Front of Liberation with me, and then uh, to fight the North Vietnamese if at that time the North Vietnamese do not, uh, did not want to have a peaceful solution in, North Vietnam, in South Vietnam. So why at that time we have a kind of march north. If you remember in July of 74, I am prepared. Uh, 64, I mean. We're starting again. We have a march north in. Yeah, we, we, uh, we had a march north movement at that time in July 64. Uh, I prepare at that time the psychology of the South Vietnamese people that maybe we need to go north to answer to the aggression from North Vietnam. You, you cannot defend yourself always to have a defensive plan, you know. Uh, the, what the, the, one of the uh, military principles is you better defend yourself by having an offensive plan. What did the Americans in particular, what did <coughs> Ambassador Taylor think about your plan to march, your movement to march north? In fact, we do not have uh, any concrete plan, military plan on that. I told you a kind of psychology, a psychology at that time we have to, to develop. Uh, I don't see they do not have any ob objection because we do not have a, any plan. Now, after that, we have a incident of Tonkel Gulf, you know. You remember that uh, Tonkel Gulf incident? And then we start the air war. At, uh, we go to North Vietnam to bomb North Vietnam. It's a kind of incident. We do not plan in my part of South Vietnam authorities to have that South Vietnamese uh, psychology plan against the North and the incident, Gulf of Tonkin incident, who gave Johnson at that time the power to go to bomb North Vietnam. There's no connection to that, if you, if you can say so. Did you think that it would have been possible to <clears throat> invade the North and fight in the North without American troops? Uh, a full-scale, no. Uh, yeah, uh, going to invite North Vietnam in full scale, uh, not. We do not have the main, you know, we do not have cheap, you know, uh, cheap, I mean, both, you know, uh, uh, air, power, navy, all that stuff to go to have a bridgehead, uh, you know. But we can have just a bridgehead not so far from the 17th parallel. And the population over there is looking for the, to liberate for, from South Vietnam. Believe it or not, you know, they are like now. They, they know what the communist uh, dictatorial is. So they want us to go over there. So we can have a kind of bridgehead, you know, and that exchange money later on if we want to have a negotiation with North Vietnam. But uh, really, I do not feel that we can go and take over Hanoi, you know, and change the government from, from that point, no. When you started starting a campaign about marching north, though, the Americans didn't react at all? They didn't tell you to shut up? They didn't tell you to stop saying it? Or did they encourage you to say it? Uh, you know, at that time, uh, I uh, feel free from the American advice or American authority in Saigon. I still feel free right now in the United States. I can tell anything I, I, I like, I do anything I, I like. I do not care about what they think about. I'd like to get into one particular <clears throat> uh, aspect at this time, was the 34A operations, the United South Vietnamese uh, landings, commando raids against the coast in the north. Could you tell about that? How did that start? 
What kind of American support did you get for those operations? What were you trying to do? You know, that's a very secret o operation. The yeah, would you repeat the subject? 34A. Uh, yeah, 34? A. Yeah, yeah. The, You're not yeah. the number. Okay, go ahead. Commander. The, 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 there are two, two, two kind of commando. One going by sea, and one going by air. You know, and we send by air. And incidentally, he was one of the pilot that we send. You know, to carry the uh, commando, which we send by air to the mountain to the uh, mont mountain region in North Vietnam. Uh, and also, we send uh, you know commando by sea. Uh, going back to the by sea. These uh, is, uh, these uh, forces are very special one. Nobody knows about that. Only ZM and myself. Uh, for example, the Ministry of Defense do not know about that because they are so special that the boat was built, built in uh, the northern Europe. I don't know if it's Switzerland or you know. I mean, not the Switzerland, Suede. Uh, Swedish. Uh, Sweden. I don't. Uh, <coughs> and the crew was Vietnamese, but the captain was a kind of mercenary, you know what? Uh, Start again, it's a mercenary. <coughs> yeah. An American? No, they are not American. Could you tell about it? Uh, they were, uh, the, the man that I meet one time when I have an inspection in the island Sorry, did you say the captain of the boat? Yeah, the, the, the captain of the boat was a, uh, a foreigner, not, 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 not American. It can be, you know, any uh, mercenary uh, from Europe. Um, but the boat was a kind of pity boat, you know, and it's go very fast. And uh, we stationed this force outside of Da Nang. So this force always all, uh, all you receive order to go from the president himself, nobody else, or from the special organization, I mean, headed by the CIA at the time. Now, what was the American role in these operations? I think they support us, and uh, fi fi financially, it's very... Sorry, could you say what the American... The, 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 I think that the American uh, support us uh, fi financially, to buy the boat, uh, to pay the captain, uh, to pay the, the Sorry, we'd have to change the thing. Sorry, would you go? I mean, a lot of this is all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Could you first tell us about uh, these operations against the North in the 1964? Who commanded these operations? Uh, these special forces. Uh, Just move a tiny bit over. Uh, you have to hold on to that. You're not as good fine. I yeah. don't look at me. These special forces. Yeah, the the these special forces are organized in a kind of uh, joint command, a very special one. It's special people from the CIA, and uh, special uh, people from uh, Vietnamese forces, and. Uh, we have a, a section of uh, the armed forces who take care of these op operations. Now, could you describe how the <coughs> South Vietnamese PT boat uh, drew the North Vietnamese boat towards the Maddox, behind the Maddox? Uh, yes, they, we, um, I think there are a decision at that time who took it, I don't know, but uh, a kind of routine operation um, to support the commando that we land in North Vietnam. But at that time, we used these Vietnamese special forces to Dong Hai port to throw the, uh, Viet the communist pity board to go after to kind of provo provocation, you know, and the pity board of the communist pity board to go after the special pity. Uh, South Vietnamese PT boat, and the PT boat go, you know, uh, in the back of the Maddox at that time, and the communist PT boat still fine at, at the special force PT boat, and the, the Maddox fear that they were fired, you know, in the international water by the communist ship boat, so they 
fight back, of course. That was the incident of, uh, of Tonkin at that time. But was this operation to draw the communist PT vote toward the Maddox, was this a deliberate plan of the South Vietnamese? Uh, you mean the South Vietnamese uh, government? Was no. Or the, these forces? Uh, the, uh, I think that operation had been uh, mounted for the purpose of back here in, in Washington. And uh, you know that the Tonkin, the so-called Tonkin resolution to give uh, President Johnson full power to answer to this provocation at that time. So the beginning of the commitment of uh, American troops by this uh, re resolution. Who did that? For what purpose? I don't really know exactly, but I feel that s some people mounted that operation to support Johnson in the Congress at that time. Now, <clears throat> you had a confrontation with Maxwell Taylor, the ambassador, in November of 1964. Could you tell us what happened in this dispute between you and Ambassador Taylor? Yes, you know, uh, uh, that this uh, discuss, this yeah, they, uh, we had, uh, we, uh, Ambassador Taylor and, 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 and me and I, we had a very bad uh, moment together at that uh, day in the Joint Staff. Uh, Ambassador wanted to see me uh, because he uh, met what we call the Young Turk at that time, the Young General Officer, namely Wind Kauki and Wind Van Thieu and other general. And, uh, um, to uh, kind of to insult them uh, for, you know, being changing what we call the civilian government at the time. Take uh, four? No, in more general sense. No, but be more detailed. Tell us about some of the things you said. Oh, right. 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 Tell us about this dispute. Why talk? The general, uh, Ad Ambassador Taylor. Yes, the, uh, the, dispute, uh, the dispute that I had with uh, Ambassador Taylor at that morning in August, I think, something like that, was in the Charles staff. Sorry, it was in November, so let's do it again. It, it was in... Uh, it was in... Start again, please. Uh, the dispute that I had with uh, Taylor, it, it was in that morning of November 64, in my office in the Charles staff. And uh, Taylor wanted to come to see me to ask me to punish the young general who just the day before uh, made a kind of coup, because there are many coup and that, but not a kind of coup, but just to dissolve the branch of the civilian uh, government at that time, but still keeping the, uh, Premier Hearn in office. And uh, he said that you have to punish them. I said that uh, if I have to punish them, I do so, but I do not receive order from you to punish them, to punish my, my young general. Uh, you do not have to interfere on the internal problem of South Vietnam. And then General Taylor told me that, so you had to leave the country, like that. I say that, uh, no, you are not the, the person who tell me to leave the country. Uh, you were a good American general officer. You fought the World War II in Korea. I don't know if you understand well the kind of fight we have here in the communists, but what you just tell me, I know that you are a very bad ambassador. That was my discussion, and I tell him just, uh, I don't uh, have any contact with him anymore, and I just take the door. And the, the quickness of that conversation, conversation was in the American side, nobody in the, in the Vietnamese side, I was the only one. But in, with Taylor at that time was Alexis Johnson, the deputy um, ambassador, who is a very nice man, but anyway, he carries the relation better than, you know. But anyway, that was a, a, one of the incidents that, you know, uh, affect the relation that I had with the ambassador, the U.S. Um, ambassador at that time, Saigon. It's a very bad one. Did you have any other later uh, arguments and disputes with them? No, I told him that from now on, you are ambassador of, of uh, the United States in South Vietnam. 
you better have the direct re relation with the go South Vietnamese government. I am the commander-in-chief. I do not have a direct contact with you. So anything you want to do, go through the, the South Vietnamese government, go to Mr. Hearn then. But uh, later on, I have a conversation on telephone with, uh, with, um, with Ambassador Taylor, Taylor, and he's confirmed to me that I have to leave the country. And I, I give to you, I mean, the transcript of that tape that I had uh, with Taylor, when Taylor told me that, yeah, he still wants me to quit uh, the country. He did, he, uh, his game, uh, his goal had been success when I had to leave the country in February 25th, 65. Now, how did you feel about later in 1964 and beginning in 1965, how did you feel about the idea of bringing American combat troops into uh, I, will, uh, bring, uh, I was against the idea to commit the Crown American troop in South Vietnam for the simple reason that we do not need that. We need the support, the technical support, the technology of the uh, American armed forces, but we do not need the combat troops at that time. You know, how can we justify with the population if the American come to fight for us? We just can't. So this error uh, is main, one of the main errors that we made in the year 65 to bring in the combat troops, American combat troops in South Vietnam. And then the South Vietnamese armed forces become a kind of uh, suppletive. You know, the, the second reign on the, and the, the, the national mission of these forces cannot be uh, in the Vietnamese hand. Then it, it are under the American hand. And later on, later on when we see the American withdrawal with the change in government back in Washington and, and policy, and then when the elements of the American troops is getting out of the country. The disaster we saw later on in 75 is the result of the decision to send the, the troops, American troops, to fight for the Vietnamese troops. At, uh, you said, uh, could you comment on your sense that the American political system was not stable, that we changed administrations all the time? Could you say that? Uh, I think they, they um, American system, democracy is, is number one, really. And I'm not telling you that because I'm here. But it's good for the American people here. But to fight the communist world domination, you must have a kind of continuating uh, plan. I mean, uh, you must have a, a plan, you know, not changing every four years when you have a new president, you know, coming with new plan, you know, all that. So uh, I think it's not the kind of stability, but strategically, you do not have a plan, a continuation, yeah, a continuation of the plan to fight the okay. communists. We have to just the knot on the shoulder, Okay, we're going to uh, roll 632. Uh, when he starts to the day, uh, okay. Right? Yeah. How did they force you out in February of 1965, and how did you feel about it? I think with the support of uh, uh, General Moore and the Air Force, his liaison officer with Min Kauke at that time, and they go to the uh, military council and they vote against me and they have they want me to leave the country sorry you have to start again saying who who's they no. they the, the council the, 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 the military council with a suggestion if I can say so uh, some uh, American friends advisor namely for example General Moore of the Air Force 
to suggest that idea, to keep, maybe, you know, but uh, I, I know that it was true. And uh, then the, the council uh, forced me to leave the, the country. It was officially. But in fact, you know, it's, uh, there are many books writing on that, that, that uh, incident, and the American official in Saigon are very pleased at that time to see me uh, out of the country. How did you feel about it? I feel very, very badly. And uh, I left Saigon with some of my soul of the Vietnam, you know, in my hand. I left uh, seeing the soldier that I always command, you know, for two decades uh, behind. I feel that uh, I missed bring peace to my people. And I feel that uh, maybe the only time that we can have that peace, you know, and have the dignity of South Vietnam, the sovereignty respected by every people. And I feel very badly, of course. <coughs> I wonder if we could go back and you could tell us a story again about the, the fight that you had with General with Ambassador Taylor, if you could just repeat the story, because we could do it a little sharper this next time. Yeah, I, uh, in November on, on that morning of November 1964, Ambassador, Ambassador Taylor uh, came to see me in my office. Now, and on Sunday, he sent me a telegram. I was in Dalat, you know, and my family was in Dalat, uh, the mountain resort. And uh, he sent me a telegram that Ambassador Taylor wants to see General Khan in his office uh, Monday morning. I said to my aide, send back to, the, to Taylor, to General Taylor, that General Khan wants to see General Taylor in my office in, on Tuesday, the day, the day later. So why I, he came to see me the day later. And that start to blame on the... Uh, young general, you know, who just made the de decision to dissolve one of the branch of the civilian government, but still keeping Premier Hearn in office. Uh, some newsmen, press people, call it a coup. That's not a, a coup. We can just want to change it. But uh, Taylor want me to punish the young general. I told him that uh, if I have to punish the, the young general, I will do it so, but the order will not come from you. So we are very mad at that time, and uh, uh, maybe I don't remember exactly, but uh, he said that yes, you have to leave the country then. If you do not punish them, you have to leave the country. So I answered to him that um, maybe we are, you are a good general officer of the American Armed Forces to fight World War II in Korea. But I'm not sure that you understand well how to fight the communists in the revolutionary war. But also I understand that I know that you are a very bad ambassador because you just tell me to have to leave the country. And um, so I tell the Taylor, just take the door. If you, from now on, if you have to have contact with me, go through the Vietnamese government, because you are a U.S. ambassador, go through my government. I'm not going to deal with you directly. I am the commander-in-chief, still the chain of command, you know, you have to go to the government. And Alexis Johnson, vice ambassador, was there that morning, and he know what happened then. Let's go on to, we'll go back to one, this is the last point. There were Buddhist riots were taking place in Vietnam in the end of 1964 and the beginning of 1965. What was causing all this Buddhist, these Buddhist riots? It was 63. No, it was later. Be before the, the DMQ? Oh, no. no. Later, the end of 64. Yeah, later it, a, cry, it, a kind of, uh, of uh, power stringer, you know. Uh, the Buddhists want to have more because they said that the revolution against the ZM 
who was a kind of Catholic government, you know, at that time, was their, their, um, with their support. They are the, the main body and that they want more. Uh, a kind of uh, Khomeini in Iran with Tsitri Kwan. You remember that, bon that Buddhist uh, price? And he wanted to be a kind of you know, leader like uh, Khomeini in, in Iran. So they always would, you know, write to, 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 to have, uh, you know, to destroy what we want to, to build uh, politically in South Vietnam. There's been, there's been, people have said that you were encouraging the Buddhists to riot and to, you were. To make me trouble? To, to, to make, yeah, I, I was in, in, in government at that time. Any time you have a riot, it's a trouble, come to me. You remember, I, wa I have to go to see the, the people, the riot people one time in the front of my prime minister building. I have to, to pay myself, my all, I have to go to talk with them. I will not make tr trouble for my own, it's not true, it's not true. Okay, that was a question. Yes, it's a French, a French political game. No, that's, uh, that, no, that's not true. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there are a point. Uh, in fact, uh, that, that's something uh, true in that. I, I was supporting the Buddhists, but the, with the Buddhists in a, a general uh, strategy. You know, we have uh, India, Burma, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, Taiwan, and Japan. What we call it, it's a yellow bear. Yellow bear to stop the red invasion. That's a kind of, of uh, uh, religion side of the fight against the communists. So I was for the organization of kind of international Buddhists. And if you remember, we had a headquarters of international Buddhists at that time in Saigon to, wall, to build its forces to face the communist red, vague of red, you know, uh, invasion from the China, either China or Russian. But, but th there's, there's no truth to the fact that you, if you could convince the armed forces that you, that you were capable of quieting the Buddhists, then, then you could take over the government and get rid of the civilian government. You know, uh, what, what is it? You, you, uh, you feel you think like an American. Of course, they are establishing all that stuff. But you remember, the power after the coup against them was under the military. And I put Hearn, I put Dun Van Min like uh, chief of state. I put Hearn, I put Wark, Quack on the prime minister role. Anytime we feel that they do not answer, I mean, deal with the situation, we change them. They are not a coup. Either Quat, either Hearn or Min does not come in office with election, with the power, with the population, you know. The people give him the mandate to be prime minister or to be, to be uh, chief state. The mandate is coming from the armed forces at that time before we have any constitution, you know, uh, set up later on. So when we change a government, it's not a coup. We just change somebody what we just want to put in. That's all. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, side of, of the problem um, is more imp very important. If the general officer just stay in office and thinking about power, about politics, who's going to fight the communists is the fear. So why I give back my own power, like from near to hand. And I, took, I keep the commander in chief, and also I keep the president of the military council. That is something, a body up of the government at that time. And that body can decide a, 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 anything, you know, until we have a constitution. But at this organization at that time, so sometimes, you know, you uh, make, uh, uh, re raisonnement, comme on dit ça? Uh, reasoning. 
uh, re reasoning like uh, here to translate, you know, the whole thing here, and every time we change the, the government, it's you know, a, a kind of coup. That's not. That's not, that's that's not, that's not but but, but yeah. you weren't stirring up the Buddhists deliberately. Uh, I I I I don't. I don't think that I support the Buddhists. I told you a moment ago, uh, to because they are the majority of the of, of South Vietnam. You know, we always have a minority in power in Saigon, either during Bao Dai, later during Diem. They are minority in South Vietnam. They are minority Catholic. They are minority from Central Vietnam. They are not from South Vietnam, and they are not other religion, then, you know, so why? Uh, you do not have the support of the ma majority of the population. And the majority is Buddhist or Confucius, you know, all that stuff, not, not Catholic. So my, uh, my, my, my view at that time was to organize a kind, I told you, a yellow bear. Yellow means the, the Buddhist uh, color, you know, uh, from India to Burma, Cambodia, South Vietnam, Taiwan, and Japan. That bell is again to push south from China. And I support the Buddhists in that sense, yes. But I'm not support them, you know, to go to riot in the, because it was against my government at that time, you remember, so I'm not foolish enough to, <laughs> to do so. No, no, it's not true. Not true. Good. <clears throat> there are two words that I'd like you to repeat. Yeah. Um, one is punish. Mm -hmm. Punish. 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 Oh. Soil. 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 Oil, soil. Oil, soil. Soil, soil. Soil. Once again. Soil. Soil. S-O-I-L. S-O-I-L. Oh, soil. 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 In my hand, a pack of soil, a pack of soil in my hand, a pack of soil in my hand, soil, soil, soil. Say dirt, earth. Yeah, earth, yeah, earth. 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 A pack of earth, 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 earth. earth. Uh, earth. 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 Mm. Earth. Earth. A soil. Soil. Earth. Same thing. an oil and then come in. Come. You find the best one. I don't know. <laughs> if you can't find it, we have to be quiet for a second. The people, the boat people, getting out, got got in, getting out of South Vietnam, that so-called communist paradise, and that to show enough to the whole world that the communist regime doesn't work in South Vietnam. And maybe if we are a fight now inside in, in South Vietnam we will have certainly the support of the general, of the majority of the population. We never had that, that thing before. But now if there is some, something, you know, moving over there, I am almost sure that we have, I'm sure, that we have the support of the um, majority of the population. Would you go back to, South, to Vietnam? Uh, I, I am a political, uh, asylum situation here. Um, legally, I cannot tell that I make any political action here, but I always want to be with my people.
or whatever. I want to go back to Vietnam, of course, if possible. 